So if this is wrong, everything after this is also going to be wrong. In today's video, we're going to find out is it possible for me to machine five of these Hustler V200 engines here in my garage. And we're going to see whether it's feasible and profitable. Now we're going to look at the key pieces of equipment required for the production run of the Hustler V200. So first up, we have my CNC mill. Now, it wasn't always CNC. I purchased it several years ago for about $2,800 and spent another $1,000 uh, converting it to CNC. Now, it isn't a $100,000 machine, but it is good enough and hits all of the tolerances required for this project. The second key piece of equipment for this production run is my lathe. Now this is a Taiwanese made lathe. It is 45 years old and I bought it for $2,800 several years ago. It came with a digital readout and the biggest piece you can spin in here is 250 millimeters. Now the reason I need this piece of equipment is for the crankshafts, making and modifying the crankshafts for the engine. So the final piece of equipment that is key to making this all happen is the laptop. Now this one is a little bit overkill, but all I use it for is running Mac 3, which sends pulses to the mill, and that essentially tells it where to move and how far. So is it possible? 100%, we've already showed that with the prototype and the production engine, which is already in a customer's bike and it's been sold. But this is a different story. We have five engines to do, and if they took as long as the first ones, I'd be here at the end of the year still finishing up these five engines. And I do not have time for that. So what I've done is come up with a clever solution to maximize my time efficiency and reduce the setup times, which really drag out how long it takes to make each one of these engines. The silver bullet that is gonna solve all of my time efficiency issues is a fixture plate. Now, that was made really easy with the help of today's video sponsor, JLC CNC. All I had to do was design the thing, upload it to their website, choose all of my specifications, being the tolerances, surface finish, location of threaded holes, and then I was ready to select my shipping and pay for the thing. And then a short time later, the parts were shipped out to me and very professionally wrapped, ready to use. The parts exceeded my expectations, so a massive thank you to today's video sponsor, JLC CNC. That got heavy all of a sudden when I can see it. So in the past, this is how all of the previous pieces were set up. I would essentially ensure the mill was nice and clean, set down some spaces to ensure I only had three points of contact to stop the casting from rocking. From there, I would have to indicate the part and I had to do this for every single setup, every time I flipped it for every single piece five hours later sweet so you've seen us unbox it and now we're going to look at the fixture plate mounted to the mill so essentially the fixture plate it is one giant vice with a fixed jaw and a moving jaw now the moving jaw it's pretty clever i'll show you how it works we've actually got a hole which is slotted in the middle of a countersink so what that allows us to do is create a clamping force with the countersunk M10 fastener, moving this jaw about two millimeters. Now that's all we need to clamp our castings, as this vise is designed for only one thing, and that is holding castings for the Hustler V200. So we have tool one, our edge finder. And now we can locate our part. Wow. 
So now what we're doing is we're working our way over to the other side and I'm gonna essentially find the center of the circle by dividing this number by two. So this will be zero, this here is approximately, I think it's 18, um, and then in between there is the bang in the middle of the hole. So we do this in X and Y and the casting is located. Sweet, so we've just done a tool change to tool number 13. This is our first operation facing the part. So we have a flat surface to drill holes in and then tap to M8. Essentially what we are doing is running a facing program. I just touched on the part and now we're going to take off the bare minimum amount to get a flat surface. So we'll lift up the cutter and start the program. So on this first pass it might not get anything because this is set up to do all of the castings so they're slightly different between them there you go and I don't want it taking off too much um, in one go as it's quite a bit of load for the cutter so we just take it easy and just wait for it so this is stepping down in a quarter of a millimeter so 0.25 mil increments and I wrote this tool path by hand and it has a nice little rapid um, on those Y transitions so you can see it minimizes time when it's not cutting. So the beauty of the fixture plate is this part can be taken off, replaced with a fresh casting, and it is one bolt. There's no indicating, no finding zero for the next part. Um, and I can run that program again two minutes and nine seconds and the parts are faced. In the past I would get a finger clamp here, here, I'd have to find the Z height and then I didn't have that program written out on the computer so I'd just jog it around with the mouse pad and if I had to do this without the fixture it'd be about 20 minutes give or take without rushing things. Doing that five times what are we looking at an hour 40 to just face all my engines. Maybe a little bit quicker, but way, way longer than two minutes. I just wanna make sure it's still in the middle. Um, we'll go program run, and we'll go load G code, and we'll go all files. So we've got op one, we've got our spot drill. What we're gonna do now is change to tool two, spot drill the holes. Now. The awesome thing about this tooling setup is I don't have to touch off after doing it for the first time because all of these tools are set offline, meaning I've measured all the heights of all the tools, put them in a tool table so the computer knows how long all of these things are, essentially saving so much time touching off every tool individually. Bang that in there. So what it's going to do is it's going to go to home. Um, it's going to check tool twos in the spindle, which that is tool two. I'm going to apply the offset for the Z height. So that there was my chance to make sure before the holes are fully drilled, the spot drills actually look like they're in the correct place. And it also helps to guide tap size drill. So the spot drilling's done. I've loaded in tool 10, the 6.7 mil drill for the next operation. And as well as being a visual aid, these are going to guide this drill bit um, in the right location for the M8 thread. This is really important because after this operation, the entire part is located by these threads. So if this is wrong, everything after this is also going to be wrong. As you can see, we're using a different tool with a different amount of stick out. So I've accounted for that all in Mac 3. And in the program, it's actually just going to call up the different tool. So that was tool 2. Now we've got tool 10 and it automatically adjusts the height difference. So it's just 
swapping the tools in and out and the program knows what tools in there and does all of the different offsets for me, saving heaps of time. Again, massively beneficial having that fixture plate as you only set this once. So for all the next cases, I don't have to keep resetting this. It's the same program every time. This is tool 12, my M8 thread mill. It's going to plunge into the bottom of the hole and cut a thread on its way out. It has some sharp little teeth on it. And what we will be able to do is thread this part straight into that hole um, when we're finished. Now this saves me tapping by hand and making sure the tap's all nice and square um, and just massively cuts down on time spent taking this, setting it up, tapping by hand and trying to get everything perfectly straight. This will be down to, you know, 0 0.0203 of a millimeter accurate. Sweet, so that is setup one complete. We have faced the part, spot drilled, drilled, and then tapped all of the holes M8. Um, and now we're ready to flip the part over and use those M8 holes to locate it to our sub fixture. So what we're gonna do is test, uh, do these M8 threads actually work? Cool, so as you can see, the fixture plate is invaluable as a time saver. Um, the longest process there was tapping the four holes. That was about just over six minutes. But what we essentially did was face the part, spot drill, drill, and then tap. And that was all under 15 minutes. And I could take this piece off, put another piece on, and replicate that entire process repeatedly, which I have to do four more times um, to get all five engines complete. Now, without the fixture, we'd be looking at a 20 minute setup on top of that 15 minutes every single time. So that'd be an hour and 40 minutes longer just to do this first setup on each engine. So once OP1 is completed, we're left with these four holes and we have a sub plate, which actually bolts up to these four holes and the holes are countersunk to recess the fasteners. And then from there, we can actually place this on the doweled uh, surface and we can have the part in multiple orientations. Uh, it makes more sense when we have this mounted to an angle plate and we can actually machine every face on the engine. And this is an absolutely perfect transition fit with no play. This is secured with a single M10 fastener in the center, making removing the subplates extremely easy. When I was on, um, I was on AliExpress the other week trying to get myself some bearings for just backups for the spindle here and they're P5s, and I looked online, well, I called the local shops, and they had no, there's no P5 bearings in country in New Zealand, apparently. They have to come from overseas. So I just checked out, you know, AliExpress, thinking, whatever. Surely they've got something, and they reckon they had an ABEX 7 bearing a pair for $20, and I was like, no way, it's only 20 bucks, I'll just buy these. So they showed up after, I think it was within the week, so I've got them on the bench, and when I open the box, the box says ABEC 7, but then the bearing says ABEC 9 made in Germany on it. But then they're from the APE Bearing Corporation and the, the big box they come in said China. So it's pretty confusing whether they're ABEC 7, ABEC 9, made in Germany, made in China. I actually don't, well, I do know. I do know they're not made in Germany <laughs> and they're not ABEC 9 bearings. <laughs> Probably won't use them in the spindle. 
But it's good to have spares. You never know. Do you know much about bearing smiles? No, nothing. Uh, so with the metric stuff, well, I think it's metric, ISO, you get the number, and so you get a, like a C for a general purpose bearing, and then the higher the number, the looser the tolerance. So you get, you know, a, and then you also get a P for a precision bearing. You get like a P5, a P3. P! Um, and so on for a tighter tolerance with the American stuff. Well, I think it's American. They go for the ABEC rating. And obviously the higher that number, the more precise. So I think that ABEC 9 is the equivalent to a P... P! 2 or 3, I'm not quite sure. But I know if they were real ABEC 9 bearings, they would be hundreds if not thousands of dollars, <laughs> not 20 bucks. So you're saying uh, all those years I was skateboarding are overpaid for bones bearings? Yeah, dog. <laughs> Wait, so what we have here is our facing program. All I have to do is hit cycle start. The machine will go to the tippity top. It'll make sure tool number 13 is in there. I'll confirm that and then I hit cycle start again and our part will be faced to the final thickness. So now the part's faced, what we're going to do is remove the uh, face mill and then I'm going to put a spot drill in there. And then what that's going to do is it's going to create some nice little divots. So when I finally do drill all of the deep holes, it will guide the drill and prevent them from wandering off. So the spot drill, it's nice and stubby and it's not likely to wander off while um, starting all the holes. Oh, yeah. Sweet, so I've just changed to tool number eight, the five millimeter drill. It's a little bit long, longer than it needs to be, but for a few of these holes, they are quite deep. Um, and all that's gonna do is drill through these little dimples here, as you can see, um, and they'll start the hole. Once these are drilled, they're all going to be tapped M6. Sweet, so that's a wrap, and as you can see in this video, that fixture plate is invaluable, maximizing my productivity and cutting my time per engine down massively. So next time you see these, there will be a running engine, and that will be in another video. Ha <laughs> ha